Alright guys, today's project is I am building some new gates for the front of our property here. Uh, I'm using my trailer as a workbench because it's nice and big and flat. Um, I'm building this out of steel. Uh, so I'm kind of taking a break because the weather is kind of hit and miss right now. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys what I got going on here. So I bought five 20 foot um, box tubing as you guys can see here. Uh, I've made my cuts. This is the second gate I'm making right now. There's actually two gates for the front property here. Uh, then here's my insides that I already made. <clears throat> here's the raw material here. So this is a 20 foot piece. Box tubing. Make sure you guys the um, thickness on it here. Right there. Yeah, nice little project. Um, I'm trying to get to it before the the rain comes in because I want to treat my metal before the rain comes in so I was able to treat this one before the rain came in yesterday you guys can see this one is not done yet um, it's pretty close though what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one more bar across the middle here actually not right at the middle but a little bit lower than the middle um, for our automatic gate opener to attach to uh, so I do have to cut these pickets right here again and basically take one of these bars right here and put it right in between you know basically down the down the line here um, that way it sits inside and then these bars will attach to that piece of um, support that goes across and it'll look pretty neat too um, and then after I finish that bar that goes in the middle there um, I'm gonna resand everything back down again and then treat everything so I'm using the there's a product oh man what's it called it's a rust preventative so if you if either if you have existing rust or even if you have brand new steel you can treat the metal to prevent it from rusting uh, so I'm treating the metal and then after it's you know done carrying doing its thing I'm coming back and I'm painting it with um, oil based paint now there is two ways that you could essentially paint your gate um, you could do a powder coat or you could do oil based paint oil based paint is really good for exterior um, it holds up a lot better than water base but I don't have access to a now, I bought five pieces of the 20 foot box tubing here. That cost me a little over 500 something dollars. I think it was like $573 um, to you know, be able to do my project here. And then there was the other materials for the pickets and everything. But um, what I want to point out was, I'm not gonna be using all these sticks for this, right? Um, there's gonna be leftover material um, for another project I have coming up. But I just wanted to show you guys what I got going on in the background. I know I haven't made a video in a long time. But, uh, yeah. And then I want to show you guys something interesting. So, on my cuts, I want to show you guys how... Look at how clean that cut is right there. And all my cuts are like that. Really, really clean. You know? I mean, I already welded the other side. And I've already um, grinded down the bulk of it. And then... 
um, disc sanded it and then polished it. That's why I have a finish like this. Right? So that way the corners, well, it's all, my hands all dirty, but that way I have a corner that's really uniform. It looks like it's one piece, right? So I'm polishing it back down so that way you don't see the weld anymore. So it just disappears. But um, getting a really nice clean cut. I mean, you guys can see how well that lines up right there. Really nice. Really nice. So um, I already welded the, the bottom side of this and this part right here on the corner. So I need to finish welding this top right here and then welding the inside. And I want to show you guys the inside. Look how tight that inside is right there. Look at that. So I still need to finish welding these, grind these down, and then polish them out so they blend in. It looks like one piece. Uh, and then I can treat it and then I can paint it. Uh, and then I can go ahead and start adding uh, my other section that I have already made into here. So it's definitely a project, you know, but it's it's doable. And then I have uh, some heavy duty um, greasable hinges. So it comes with a grease nipple on top of the hinge. So that way over time to make sure that the gate is opening and closing and functioning very smoothly, uh, you can re-grease the hinge. Not only that, it prevents the that actual part from rusting out over time because there's grease in there. Um, so if you guys are going to be, you know, putting some gates together for your property or whatever, look, look for the greasable hinges. They're going to save you guys a lot, you know. I mean, yeah, they do cost a little bit more money up front, sure, but, uh, you know, over time it's definitely going to be worth it. I mean, look at, look at all my cuts. Like, look how nice they are. And I'll show you guys what I'm using to do that. I am using, most of you guys may use a abrasive wheel, meaning a, um, a, uh, a chop saw style abrasive wheel to to cut metal that's kind of the norm from before but I'm not doing that I am basically using my skill saw to cut metal yeah skill saw and battery operated at that so but here's the thing this is not a um, wood um, you know saw blade this is actually a metal saw blade this is from Diablo um, I'm not advertising for these guys but it works very well um, so it's a Diablo blade and it is a, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's steel diamond or st steel demon um, blade. And it works, I mean, uh, this, uh, it's amazing guys. This really does cut like it's cutting wood. Like you would think when you're cutting steel, it's going, you know, especially with an abrasive wheel, like a chop saw style, it takes time, right? To get through it, right? Well, because this is not grinding it, right? Essentially, because abrasive wheel is like grinding its way through. Th this is cutting its way through. It's not grind. I mean, I guess it's debatable, but there's, it's not a grinding wheel, right? This is a cutting wheel, you know? And I swear, guys, this cuts through metal just like it's wood and just as fast. It is mind-boggling. And then I'm using, um, you know, big sp speed squares here to make my 45s. So I'll give you an example. A lot of this is free form, right? And for free form, I am squaring my corners. Everything is squared, so you know everything is on it. But I'm using this, right? So that's how I made that cut. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my speed square and I have my clamps that clamp this down to the bar, so that way my speed square don't run away from me, right? And stays in spot and stays in the spot. And then essentially, what I'm doing is I'm using this edge right here as the guide for my um, skill saw to guide against to make sure I have my perfect 45 because we have a 45 on our speed square, right? So what I do is I put my clamps on, get my um, blade to where it needs to be, and then set it, and then I use this as a guide to run along it, which is pretty quick and simple, especially when you're kind of just like, you know, doing it out here, not under like a, you know, not in a real shop or anything, but it works. And then I got a big one and a small one. And then to top it off, I have, I have these right here. So what this is, this is a like a flap disc in a sense for sanding, right? It goes all the way around. Uh, do I have another one? Right here. So here's a regular one, right? But it doesn't go over the edge. This one does, right? So there's, there's a place for everything, right? As far as what you're doing. This right here is actually what I'm using to um, sand or clean up. Um, if I have a weld that's too thick or too big or not that, not that nice inside the corner of my frame. Because, you know, sanding the corner of a weld, if the weld is, you know, kind of ugly or whatever, it's a pain. Like, I'll give you an example. 
like in here so if you're going to weld in here if you don't make your i'm i'm, I'm pretty decent I, ha, I only had to use the wheel on one corner since i made all these things but um if you can weld really nice and clean then you don't have to worry about sanding it and making it smooth inside of here but that's what that wheel is for so just in case you get a little bit sloppy with your weld or whatever you can use the grinder with that wheel to actually sand in here like this and actually round it and make it nice and smooth and it's like part of the you know like it's supposed to be like you would never know you know unless you you're a welder but uh yeah that's a little pretty cool and then i have like uh two i'm using two pretty much all the tools i'm using here is milwaukee um two grinders and i have different discs on up so i have a flat disc flap disc here um for kind of just taking down the bulk of it then i do have a regular uh Let's see uh you know just a regular grinding this for like if the weld is pretty thick i'll use something like this so since i have two uh grinders here i have different disc on each one so i can just switch between instead of having to take the time to remove the disc and put the other disc on i can just swap between my two different grinders to get the work done a lot faster so that's really helpful 